Hello, everyone. It's me. It's me, Riley. Uh, this is this is pretty cool. I haven't done this before. Um, here we go. This is going to be my first lesson video uh, for Wida. This is probably one of the the most requested things that I get in in DMs and comments. It's like, hey, do you do you give lessons? Are you going to make lesson videos? You should make lesson videos. You know that kind of stuff. So here I am, finally doing it. Um, and this is going to be the first one. This one will be available to everyone um, for free. It will be publicly available. It'll be kind of a primer, um, you know, very basic intro to some some uh, basics of, of Guida technique, of Guida, Dominican Guida technique. Um, and then the subsequent uh, lessons, which will follow this, you know, building off of the um, off of the technique. And, and stuff learned in this lesson. Those will be available both on my Patreon page, um, which I will I will link and, and share when I set it up. And they will also be available on my Instagram subscriber exclusive page. Um, so if you wanna support me, what I'm doing, and wanna help me uh, actually go to the Dominican Republic, <laughs> like everyone's been asking me to do, um, I, would, I would really, appreciate your your support and you get access to a bunch of cool stuff like this um so here here goes the first lesson Let, let's let's begin so la guida this instrument has lots and lots of names depending on uh what country um you're in now th this style the the style that i'll be teaching here is from the dominican republic the guida guida dominicana is a dominican instrument from the from the um, island of Hispaniola, of Quisqueya. Um, it has pretty strong uh, native Taino influence, is, is what I've been told. Um, and it's, it's an incredibly uh, simple concept of, a, of an instrument, but it's very, very difficult. So um, we need more resources like this. So I'm hoping that this will help out people. Um, I've got four guidas here with me. This is my my main one that I have like set up and padded with a bunch of foam on the inside. Um, this is my first one. This is an LP guida. This is a more recent one that I got. Also um, made. Both of these were made by uh, Guillermo Guida in the Dominican Republic. That I I got these on eBay. Um, this is a smaller one. It's got um, larger pokies, I don't, I don't know what to call them, um, bumps. Um, and then this is my guida for merengue típico. I'm not going to be talking about merengue típico and típico technique in this um, lesson series. This will be for de orquesta technique. The típico stuff will, I'll do that later, but this, this is my típico guida made by Custom Guida. I will, I will tag his page. Um, yeah, well, let's get started. I'll use this guida for now. There's also a bunch of types of these scrapers, um, which I'll be referring to as, as ganchos. There's other names like like trinche and peine, and um, depending on what country you're in. But uh, in in the Dominican Republic, you say gancho. Um, so let me show you a couple types. This is a very common type of gancho. Um, pretty straightforward, uh, literally, pun intended. Uh, it's very long, very straight, very skinny, um, kind of axis of rotation like that. The other main type that you will see looks like this. This is a, a gancho for, uh, for típico. And instead of holding it and playing like this, you hold it and play like this. But we're not going to cover that in this series. Um, this is the gancho I'll be using. It's my favorite. Um, it has a little place for my thumb. So yeah, let's let's start with the gancho. Let's talk about uh, how how to hold the gancho. This is very this is very important. Um, so if you see my hand, uh, when I have the gancho in my hand, my hand is just it's it's wrapped around the gancho in a very natural way. You can you can see my hand from this angle too. My fingers are just wrapping around the handle of the gancho with my, my pointer finger right in the front, kind of right here, the other three fingers wrapping around the bottom, and my thumb, so you can see that, my thumb is pressed on the back as well. This is a very natural holding position, 
and it allows you to have a nice axis of rotation. Now take your arm completely extended out like this and imagine it's a an axis of rotation, your arm is. And the gancho is going to pivot around this axis of rotation. This is the motion we're going to start to focus on as we learn the basic technique. Except our arm's not going to be extended like this. Your arm's going to be back at your side. You don't want your elbow out. You don't want a chicken wing. That that will lead to bad habits. I've been there and I've done that. It's, don't do that. You can even use a belt to tie your elbow to your waist if you, if you need to work on that. Um, but your elbow is going to be in more towards your toe, towards toward your chest. Um, but we're still going to have the same motion going on here of rotating now kind of around your arm down to your elbow. Okay. Um, so that's the gancho for now. The guira. Um, there, there's several kind of ways to hold this. Um, it doesn't really matter. It kind of matters. If you hold it like this, for example, you're playing it wrong. But there's a handle for a reason. Uh, you just... Grab the handle with your non-dominant hand um, and do so in a way where you can rotate it kind of around this axis of rotation. Um, I like to stick my finger out for no good reason. It's kind of a habit. And uh, if, if your guida rings a lot and you don't have anything inside, you want to mute it, you can also stick your fingers through the handle and just hold it like this. That'll mute it. Um, but that's, that's pretty much that. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so now... You take the guida like this and the gancho like this, and we're not going to strike it yet, but we have that axis of rotation here. Uh, I'll, I'm going to talk about the two two main types of strokes um, in this first lesson. There's more, but we'll just talk about two for now. Um, there's the downstroke in which your gancho starts up and ends down, and the upstroke in which your gancho starts down and ends up. Okay, so if we take that motion and and focus on making contact with this front part this front part of the guida right at the end of the movement so for my downstroke i'm going to start up here it's going to come down and it's going to make contact around there right okay you can see from the side slowly it's making contact out there okay make sense um yeah okay so th that's that's the downstroke that's basically what's happening it's just starting up here and making contact at the bottom now it's going to be the same thing but the reverse for the upstroke you're going to start at the bottom and you're going to end up here and make contact right here remember we're just trying to use our wrist don't want to use your arm you want to isolate your wrist right so there's the downstroke wrist isolated an upstroke will be the same thing. It'll make contact about here. That looks like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you'll notice when you do a downstroke like that, you're going to stop down here and you're immediately going to be in position for an upstroke and vice versa. Right, so the, the motion will eventually be fluid and you can kind of do this kind of thing. Uh, we'll not get there for now. We're still gonna work on the on the single strokes because that's very important. Um, uh, yes, and it's it's very important um, to in, in your wrist when you're you're thinking about when you're thinking about how your arm is moving, about how it feels, it's important that you feel relaxed. You don't want to feel tense in your wrist. Part of these exercises that I'm going to help, that I'm going to teach and, and build upon, uh, they're, they're working to, to loosen up your wrist so that you can be relaxed and do, you know, crazy fast things and, and uh, precise things, uh, but you don't want to be tense. If you're tense, you're going to hurt yourself. So from the very beginning, even at this level, level you want to make sure that you're very relaxed in your motions. There, there's no pain in your wrist and you're just relaxed. And you don't wanna be all loosey goosey, kind of lazy like that. You wanna be relaxed or uh, a better word, controlled, right? You don't wanna be you're just out of control. You wanna you want it to be controlled and precise, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna show you an exercise to, to, to cap this, this first lesson off. 
um, that you can then go and practice and use um, to warm up to, to work on your up and down strokes. And I'm actually adapting this from a percussion tradition that I grew up here, that, that, that I grew up in um, here in the US, in America, on the West Coast. Um, it was my, my marching percussion um, or drum line, we call it. Um, now there, there's lots of different kinds of marching percussion and drum lines around the world, but the, the American one, the one um, that we have here is pretty, pretty unique to the US. Uh, very focused on on technique and, and precision and and those kinds of traditions. So we focus a lot on on different stroke types. So I'm going to be adapting a basic exercise from that um, to the guida. Um, in in drumline, we call this exercise eight on a hand or eights, where we work on our right hand strokes and our left hand strokes. I'm just going to change that to down strokes and up strokes. Okay. So the exercise is very simple. It'll start by doing eight down strokes all in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to follow that by eight up strokes in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice how whenever I finish a down stroke, I'm going to normally it would stay down here, but I'm going to let it float up so that I can do another down stroke, right? Right? Same thing if I was doing upstrokes, except it's not really floating. It, it's it's kind of like fall, it's gliding down. I don't know how to say that better. But, right? You want to kind of reset each time when you have two consecutive downs or ups. Um, so the exercise will be eight downs, eight ups, and then 16 downs. Okay, so eight down, eight up, 16 down. Then we're going to do the same thing, but in the reverse. That's the first half. And then the second half is eight up, eight down, 16 up, and then one down to finish it off. Okay, so I'm going to turn on a metronome. A metronome is very important to practice with, even for Guida. This is about building technique and timing. The musicality will, will get to that. But timing is very, very important for technique and musicality. It, it all works together. So always, always practice with a metronome. You gotta, you gotta work on your internal time sense. So I'm gonna turn one on and I'll, I'll play this exercise. I'm gonna start slow. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, eight down. One, two, three, four, five. Eight up. One, two, three, four, five, eight up. And 16 down. One, two, three, Here comes eight up. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight down. And 16 up. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, that's the exercise very slowly. I'll play it a little bit faster so you can see where it can get to. Um, and then we'll finish this first lesson for now. And I'll hope to see you guys in the next lessons. I added a subdivision. I'm actually going to go twice as fast. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. There's the exercise. I will see you guys in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. Um, and I appreciate all of you guys' support. Really excited to be putting this out there for you guys all to learn. Thank you.